The Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. See if your throat and your taste don't make Camel the first with you, too. Find out for yourself. Listen to the great rhythms of Will Osborne at his orchestra, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes. And that wide, wild, and woolly little wolf who, when asked to select the guest stars for our show tonight, telephoned the Andrews sisters and said... All right, Costello, oh, calm yourself. Boy, oh, calm yourself, oh. calm yourself. Oh. What's making you so nervous? Oh, I just heard some terrific news, Abbott. You did? Hitler has a new secret weapon that can end the war in five minutes. A secret weapon that mm. can end the war in five minutes? What is it? A long pole with a white flag on the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Now tell me, where were you all afternoon? Oh, where was I? Yes. I went out and got my uncle Artie Stubbins. St- Stebbins! Stebbins! I go already. It's so soon in the script, too. Please. All right, now, now. just take it easy, please. I just got my uncle Artie Stebbins a job. It's a, jo- a swell job, Abbott. He's a bookmaker. Why, you dummy, he'll wind up in jail. Bookmaking is against the law. That's gambling. Yeah, but he don't gamble, Abbott. He's a bookmaker in a bakery. A bookmaker in a bakery? Yeah, he takes orders for cakes. He's a cookie bookie. Oh, God. <laughs> Costello, I don't know which one is dumber. You or your uncle Artie? Well, I don't like to brag, Abbott, but I am. Of course, Artie is lazier than me. No, no, you mean lazier than I. Yes, sir, he's lazier than the both of us. <laughs> My Uncle Artie only says his prayers one night a year. No, he must be lazy. Yeah, the rest of the night he just hops in bed and says, Ditto. Well, <laughs> let's, forget, let's forget your Uncle Artie. Now, there's something I want you to do for me, Costello. Abbott, you know there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. And there's nothing I wouldn't do for you, Costello. And there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. I know, I know. That's the way it is, folks. We just go through life doing nothing for each other. Yeah, all right, look. <laughs> Talk sense, Costello. I, I just wanted you to be sure uh, to behave yourself tonight because the Andrews sisters are coming over and you've got to be careful how you handle those girls. Yeah. They have scruples. I don't care. I, I've been vaccinated. <laughs> I can't catch scruples. No, 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 you dummy. Scruples are not catching. Scruples are principles. Scruples make a girl sweet. They do? Sure. Oh, I bought my girl some of them last night. You bought your girl some scruples? Yeah, I got a banana split with three scruples of ice cream. (laughs) You idiot. Banana! No, 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 no. (laughs) Look, ice cream doesn't come in scruples. Ice cream comes in scoops. I thought chickens come in scoops. Chicken scoops. No. <laughs> that one later, Nate. Oh, God. Okay. Costello, scruples have nothing to do with chickens. Then how did the Andrews sisters get them? Uh, they didn't get them. A person doesn't get scruples. Scruples are a good trait. Now, do you know what scruples are? Yes, sir. When I turned in my Chevy for a Plymouth, they were scruples. No, what, what has exchanging your Chevy for a Plymouth got to do with scruples? Well, everybody said it was a good trait. Oh, well, let's forget about the scruples. I don't want to forget them. Abby, you said the Andrews sisters had scruples. That's right. Did you ever see them? No, certainly not. Then how do you know they got them? Look, Costello, when I say, when I say the girls have scruples, I don't mean they have anything wrong with them. Scruples are a trait, and a trait is part of one's character. And you can't see a person's character. Yet, you know, it's there. Oh, when you say they have scruples, you don't mean there's anything wrong with them. Scruples are a trait, and a trait is a part of a character, and you can't see the character, yet you know it's there. Now you've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. (laughs) All right, all right, that's enough. Now, what do you intend to do with the girls here? Well, I am going to sing for them. You're going to sing for them? Yes. Costello, you know nothing about songs. I'll bet you don't even know Dixie. I do, too. All right, what is Dixie? That's the place where they make all those paper cups. No, 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 no. (laughs) I can see you know nothing at all. Well, look, Lou, if you insist on singing, I'll help you. First, I'll improve your libretto. Soften your crescendo, sharpen your staccato, and smooth you your pizzicato. Well, okay. while you're at it, Abbott, Abbott, will you check my oil and give me five gallons of gas? And no, no, look, please, please, now listen, never mind that. Uh, listen to this. Look, <clears throat> now listen. <clears throat> Are you going <clears throat> to sing or jump? Now, wait a minute. <clears throat> uh, uh, <clears throat> Me, 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 What are you doing? Uh, I'm just loosening up. That's all right. Just take it I easy. I thought you were falling apart. No. <laughs> Costello, you're just jealous. 
I've been told that my voice is out of the world. And I'll bet a lot of people are waiting for you to join it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Would you like to hear me sing in my sweet little Alice Blue Gown? Could I have that again? I said, would you like to hear me sing in my sweet little, little Alice Blue Gown? I'd rather hear you whistle in your pink new nighty. Oh, no. <laughs> Costello, you're a doubting fool. Why, in my day, as a singer, women threw flowers at my feet. They threw jewelry at my feet. <laughs> Why? <laughs> They even threw themselves at my feet. Well, what have your feet got that you haven't got? Uh, look, Costello. <laughs> just for Shoes, that, I'll bet. Just for uh, that last crack, I won't help you. Oh, you won't, huh? No. Well, I don't need your help, Abbott. My uncle Clarence Porter of Big Springs, Texas, he can yodel. Uh, He'll teach me to sing because he's a good yodeler. Wait a minute. Did your uncle Porter study yodeling? No, he taught himself. He just drinks a lot of beer and lets his stomach take it from there. <laughs> Costello, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Look, what kind, of, what kind of voice does your Uncle Porter have? Oh, he's a chiropractic tenor. A chiropractic tenor? <laughs> yeah, he sings in all the joints. No, Costello. <laughs> Costello, I'm not interested in your Uncle Porter singing. I, I lean toward the uh, classical music. What classical music? Well, for instance, uh, Beethoven's first. Mozart's second. Brahms third. Just a minute, Abbott. Now? Now, you ain't gonna pull that stuff on me trying to ring in a whole new team, huh? No, 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 no. What yes, team? Yes, you are, brother. No, nah, what team? Mozart's second, oh. Beethoven's first. All I said was Beethoven's first, Mozart's second. You're nuts, Abbott. Everybody knows who's on first and what's on second, and I don't know who's on third. Get him out of here! <laughs> Midnight, a tiny island in the South Pacific, hardly a pinprick on the map, hardly big enough for a small detachment of soldiers and the radar station they maintain. Day after day, nothing but a few scraggly palm trees and the horizon to look at. No amusement, no nothing. Boy, do you get bored. Picture yourself there at midnight, and a GI at the control panel turns to you and says, you got a cigarette? Would you give him one? Of course you would, even if it were the last cigarette in your pack. Remember that when your dealer says to you, sorry, sir, I'm out of camels today. You are giving that guy in the Pacific or Germany or Okinawa or wherever he's fighting the camel he's asking for. Yes, the service first. Army, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, wherever they go in the winning of the war, they get first call on camels. C-A-M-E-L-S. The service first. Lovely Connie Haynes sings for her camel fans tonight the hit song from Central Park, Close as Pages in a Book. We'll be close as pages in a book, my love and I, so close we can share a
Now, Costello, you, you must be on your good behavior tonight. Now, do you know what to do when the Andrews sisters get here? Oh, yeah. I'll try and make a date with them. Oh, no, 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 no. You'll do nothing of the kind. Besides, I know those girls, and you wouldn't get the first base. No, just give me five minutes, and I'll be sliding into second. <laughs> Come in. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. My name is Melonhead. <clears throat> <laughs> Better known as Cassava J. Melonhead. You know, you look familiar. Didn't I see your head on a push cart? Hey, Abbott. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Please don't ever say hey. I have hay fever. And every time I hear any word with hay in it, I sneeze. Hey, hey. Right, I said it myself. Right. Hey. That's <laughs> enough. Uh, yeah, look, uh, remember, Costello, a certain word makes this man sneeze. Have you got that? I got it all over me. Then no, no, now, Mr. Melonhead. <laughs> Mr. Bellinhead, what's your business? Sir, I'm an attorney at law representing the Andrews sisters. Now, three weeks ago, April the 5th, 1945, on this program, you had the Andrews brothers. Oh, listen, don't talk to me about those guys. I hate them. You what? I hate them. Hey, 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 you said it again. I said it again. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awfully sorry. Hey, Abbott, the, the, the dam is run for the hills! <laughs> oh, 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 hey. hey, Abbott, run down to the bank. Uh oh, but you have no money in the bank. Who needs money? Get me some blotters. Quiet, Costello. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, Mr. Melonhead? Sir, I said that three weeks ago you had the Andrews brothers on this program, and in so doing, you did deliberately and with, mal with malice of forethought cause, create, and effect a libel against my clients, the Andrews sisters. Here and after known as the plaintiff. You mean they changed their name to the plaintiff sisters? No, no, no. <laughs> you dummy, he means that the Andrews sisters are suing us for slander. We need a lawyer. Ah, permit me to present myself, gentlemen. I am a lawyer. Now, <laughs> what seems to be your trouble? <laughs> you just told us what the trouble was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that was when I was representing the Andrews sisters. Now, as your lawyer, I see things differently. <clears throat> The first thing I'll do is keep you out of jail with a writ of habeas corpus. Habe hey, hey, hey. Just in the doorway of it! Hey. Here it comes! <laughs> I stopped it. Thank you. <laughs> Double cross me again, brother. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Costello. I just can't help it. Well, you don't have to chew licorice. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gentlemen, where can we talk... Where can we talk this matter over? Well, we can get together tonight at my new colonial home. Costello, <laughs> your new home isn't colonial, it's Fanny. Well, I'm no dope. I'm not going to say hey, Sienda. Hey! 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> Will you get out of here, Melonhead? You can't be our lawyer. How can you handle both sides of the case? My dear boy, I have a split personality, understand? A split personality. Now, here, take this pen and sign right here, and I'll start work on your case at once. Uh, Mr. Melonhead, I, I think you dropped your pen. Whoops, so I did. Well, I'll just pick it up. <laughs> now, whoa! Don't look now, Melonhead, but I think you split your personality. <laughs> Well, I'll be suing you, gentlemen. Good day. It was you who brought those Andrews brothers over here. Now the Andrews sisters are suing us. Oh, don't worry, Abbott. When they get here, I'll make love to them and square the whole thing. No, oh, you're going to make love to three girls? Do you know what will happen to you? Sure, it's the same as when you make love to one girl. Only I'll get slapped three times. <laughs> oh, come Who's in. That? The Andrews sisters. Costello, it's the Andrews sisters. you five-gallon jughead. Abbott, I think she means me. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. I'll handle this. Ladies, you must forgive Costello for his mistakes. After all, it's, it's not his fault that he's a dumb jerk. Well, uh, whose fault is it? <laughs> oh, this dame is dopier than me. <laughs> Listen, Costello, we're suing you for $10,000. Uh, Miss Patty, I I'm sure we can make some kind of a deal. Suppose Costello and I appear in your next picture. What about that? Well, I don't know. What can Costello do? He doesn't look like an actor to me. Is that so? Well, I was born in a theater, and it cost my father 15 cents extra. What for? <laughs> what for, Costello? What for? Huh? I say, what for? Well, the stork dropped me in a load sheath. <laughs> You're getting him too fast now! <laughs> Uh, girls, Costello's a pretty good dancer. Oh, yes, I can kick way over my head. Well, kick it over here and we'll get you a new one. <laughs> you know I can sing, too? I sang with Frank Sinatra a few weeks ago. Sure, I 
remember. We were home listening to that show. Yeah, that's right. And when you sang Costello, why, my canary climbed down out of her cage and threw herself at the cat. Oh. <laughs> uh, Mr. Costello, I think your voice is just too, too Andy Devine. <laughs> Okay, this kid Dad. is right up my alley, brother. <laughs> Listen, kids, if you want to, we'll call off the lawsuit and let Costello be in our picture. Well, that's wonderful. Costello, now we... Just a minute, Adam. Not what? Just a minute. What's Miss Petty, I'm a fair man. I want, I want this to be a square deal. I must insist on one condition. Well, what's that? I'll appear in one of your pictures if you'll promise not to appear in any of mine. <laughs> well, that sounds fair to me. Oh, this kid's a Lulu. Oh. Get him out of here! While our heroes, Abbott and Costello, were on their way to the studio to appear in the Andrews Sisters picture, our lovely guest stars sing for our camel audience, I'm Beginning to See the Light. I never cared much for moonlit skies. I never winked back at fireflies. But now that the stars are in your eyes, I'm beginning to see the light. I never went in for afterglow or candlelight on the mistletoe. But now when you turn the lamp down low, I'm beginning to see the light. Used to ramble through the park, shadow boxing in the dark. Then you came and caused a spark that's a foil on fire now. I never made love by lantern shine. I never saw rainbows in my wine. But now that your lips are burning mine, I'm beginning to see the light. Oh, Used to ramble through the park, shadow boxing in the dark. Then you came and caused a spark that's a four alarm fire now. I never made love by land and shine. I never saw rainbows in my wine. But now that your lips are burning mine, I'm beginning to see how. These days, that familiar old phrase, costlier tobaccos, takes on a new meaning. You see, the demand for camels is fantastic. Dozens of billions of camels are being made. But in spite of this huge production, every single camel cigarette is still made of costlier tobaccos. Only the costlier tobaccos, properly aged and blended in the time-honored camel way. Why, camels just wouldn't be camels if green, insufficiently cured tobaccos were used. This brand will not be sold down the river. You can't get camels every time you ask for them, but when you do get them, they're still camels. All the rich, full flavor and cool mildness of a superb blend of costlier tobaccos you expect when you light a camel. Z-A-M-E-L-S Camels, war or peace, Camels are still camels. Well, Costello, here we are at the studio. Hey, look, look, look over there. That's that great Russian producer, Kartuni Technikolovich. Aha! New actors, eh? You, fat boy, stand where you are. Don't move. Hmm. Now turn slowly around. Hmm. Now move. Get out of here! But, Mr. Technikolovich, we're Abbott and Costello, and we're here to appear in the Andrew Sisters picture. Yes, sir, Mr. Technikolovich. I'm a pretty good actor. Yes? Yes, sir. What pictures was you in? I don't like to brag, but did you see the picture of Dorian Gray? I certainly did. Don't you think it was hung a little crooked? <laughs> <laughs> Must have made Oscar Wilde. Come with me, 
We're just about to start the picture, and you boys will be co-starring. Yeah, but I think we're making a mistake. When this picture is over, they'll have to accentuate the positive and eliminate negative. No, never mind that, Costello. When do we start, Miss Andrews? Shh. They're going to shoot a scene now. Well, that scene is shot. Let's have another one. <laughs> Andrews, sisters, we're already on the set. Oh, this is our director, Mr. Cliff Nazaro. Uh, Cliff, could you use these two boys in our picture? Yes, I think so. I need a lover and a stunt man. Well, I'm a lover. And I'm stunted. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Abbott. You're no lover. No, 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 no. What do you mean? When I come on the screen, women sit up and notice me. Oh, yeah? The yeah. women who notice you are too old to sit up. <laughs> oh, Cliff, we're wasting time. Why don't you explain the scene to the boys? All right. Now, boys, this is a very simple scene. Yes, sir. The camera catches Patty and Abbott in an embrace. Costello, you come into the room and Abbott... You walk over to the saddle piece, bring out the forces, put your saddle process vein, and decapitate the sauce together with the murderous cellar. <laughs> now, how can Abbott do that to me? <laughs> do I let him get away with that, brother? Look, you don't stand for it. You grab Patty in your arms, and as you grab it lightly to the force, don't reach up too high the bubble set, just pull down the castle in the midst of a telebraid and bring in the force of cellar to eat it. Does that paint a picture for you? Yeah, but you smeared it down the middle a little. <laughs> Why don't you pay attention? He's directing you. Uh, Costello, I want you to know that you can insult our director. Absolutely not. After all, I just told you to capitate the force. Not Belfield or Business Class from Hitler's Tibetan Aid. I just want you to cap the girl, pull her to the Sasserides, all the bits with the Hinton, several of all the Sasserides, and every horse. And I know what I'm saying. You and nobody else! <laughs> There you go again insulting him. I can't understand you. You can't understand me! Can you understand him? Oh, what's the matter with you, Costello? Can't you take direction? Mr. Nazaro is a famous director. Yes. You mean to tell me you never saw Gone with a twist of Slipper Murder? <laughs> <laughs> and for whom the bells hold the castle of Frederick David Horse Bell? <laughs> I never saw them, but I saw Guadalcanal did it. You mean... <laughs> you mean Guadalcanal did No, did it. I seen it twice. Oh. Did it, did it. Yeah, all right, will you stop that, please? Well, let's, let's get back to the scene, Cliff. Mr. Costello was just about to make love to me. All right, Patty. Now, Costello, look. Listen once more. You fall in love with Patty and propose to her. So it isn't just a question of grabbing the horse and giving her that little cap to the restaurant. <laughs> You grab her in the castle, lift up the solar and go to the city of Don't you agree with me? Yeah, but what about the children? No, I'm no. <laughs> He didn't mention any children. Come on. I know. He could have. I don't know what the guy's talking about. Now, listen, Fatty. I've got a reputation. The rich! I've got a reputation. <laughs> Now listen, Fatty, I've got a reputation and I don't have to stand for this because seven years ago when I first became a director, I slurred Foster to the Mallory, the held Belgrade, pulled Foster the picture that was the greatest style of freed, and I'll do it, too. That's right, and he means every word of it. Look, folks, I realize I, I lost my head, and there's just one thing I'd like to say. For this. Gee, I'm glad he said that. He's a nice fellow. Yes, he certainly is, Costello. Just think, after the way you treated him, why, he was big enough to walk back and say, Fritis. And that means a lot, too. <laughs> yes, Lou. But what have you got to say? Oh, what can you say after Fritis? British is a word. <laughs> Listen, Lou, if you hadn't been so frantic when he came into Thralden and Clisophate, he wouldn't be so Palestine. Palestine? <laughs> what does he want from me? What does he want from you? Why, you've hurt his feelings. Why, at this very minute, he may be outside Gilfending. No. No, not Gilfending. Yes. No! Abbott, come on, quick. We haven't got a minute to lose. Where are we going? Come on, we're going outside and Gilfend with him. Ah, <laughs> yeah.
In just a moment, we will have a special treat for our camel listeners. Lou Costello will sing a special song with the Andrews sisters. So stay tuned for the musical event of the season. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight, we salute Private James C. Patterson, Jr. of Ridgewood, New York, who won the Silver Star not once but twice, and within a single month, for gallantry in the Philippines. His first decoration was won for a foray behind the Jap lines, gathering information which led to the march on Manila. The second was for another infiltration behind enemy lines, culminating in the freeing of more than 2,000 Americans in a Jap prison camp. In your honor, Private Patterson, the makers of camels are sending to our fighters overseas 500,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the two camel radio shows honors a Yank of the Week by sending free 500,000 camel cigarettes, a total of a million camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week, a rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are fighting and in cooperation with the Good Neighbor Policy, also to Central and South America. Listen Monday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks, and next Thursday to Abbott and Costello. And now we bring you Lou Costello and the Andrews sisters in a special disarrangement of Sonny Boy. When there are gray skies What, don't you mind in the least? I don't mind the gray skies. What will I do to them? You'll make them blue. Watch my name. Sunny boy. <laughs> what will friends do to you? Friends may forsake me. And what will you let them do? Let them all forsake me. And who will you still have in the end? I'll still have you. Watch my name. <laughs> Sunny boy. Where am I sent from? You're sent from heaven. Have I any special valuation? And I know your worth. What will I make? You make a heaven. For who right here on what? For <laughs> me right here. You want me to promise something? Promise you won't stray, dear. Give me a good reason. I need you so. What's my name? Sunny. Folks, be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, camels are worth asking for every time. See for yourself how camels' mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. You know, so many hundreds of adjectives have been used to describe the hundreds of brands of pipe tobacco that I just don't know what words to conjure up to tell you how good Prince Albert is. So I'll get right out of the adjective department and tell you one fact that says more than a whole dictionary. More pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco in the whole wide world. What greater tribute could a pipe tobacco get? Try Prince Albert. You'll find rich, full-bodied, real tobacco flavor, but without tongue bites. It's gentle to your tongue. Also, Prince Albert is crimp cut for firm packing, easy drawing, even burning. And what a bargain. Just about 50 pipefuls per package. Saturday night, be sure to listen to Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry. For nearly 19 years, bringing the real authoritative American folk music and fun to southern radio audiences, and now broadcast coast to coast. Remember Grand Ole Opry every Saturday night on NBC. The Andrews Sisters appeared by arrangement with the Nash Kelvinator Company. The Abbott and Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes will be back at this very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant...